Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm good, lads, and yourselves? Yeah, good. The Ireland team has been named, if anybody missed it. Mac Hansen comes in for Keith Earls. And really, that's the only change. There's a few changes on the bench. Rob Herring comes in. Finley Bealham is on the bench as well. But they've decided to double down. They went for it last week with their strongest team. And they've, they've decided that they're going to try and learn the lessons from last week and, and win a test. Uh, is it the right call, do you think? Should there have been some experimentation um, here? No, I think I think it's the right call. And maybe I'm being a bit... Um, uh, not been very, very ambitious in, in making all these changes. But I just think that, I think the reason here, Jar, is because when they reviewed the game and they looked at the stats and, and particularly the early start in the game, um, I believe that they feel they can uh, make that last for longer. And um, I think that's why they've gone with pretty much the, the, the same group. Uh, just one chair change. It's a bit hard on Keith Earls, but I think Mac Hansen probably um, coming into the tour was in pretty good form and was probably going to be selected for that first test anyway. So, um, yeah, I think they've gone for a bit of continuity and try and win this test and hope that um, they can turn the superiority of possession and territory into more scores and maybe fix the problems that they had last Saturday. It's easier said than done. I was in the team hotel just a short while ago and and uh, they announced the team and again it's hard to you know Andy Andy Farrell was asked a question about body language and was it good this week and um, he said that uh, <laughs> he's been in different teams played in different teams and I I can relate to what he's saying where they've the body language has been brilliant and the team's been buzzing and then it goes pear shaped in a match on Saturday and the opposite when it hasn't been very good and there's been a bit of core training that the performance can be brilliant so it's hard to read that but he did say that they train really well and they seem to be um, they're kind of full of belief that they can be better and, and make a real go of it on Saturday it, it, it It's definitely it's not risky right because like I mean maybe, maybe it is very risky because if you get beaten again with your best team then you realise that oh my god we're, we're absolutely miles and miles and miles away from being able to compete in a, a World Cup quarter final but um, you know, we had Derek McNamara on during the week. He he had crunched the numbers and the stats, and uh, he was more glass half full than glass half empty. Uh, after myself and Owen had been um, talking about it during the week as well. So, I suppose if you're the Ireland management team, you think, well, we did have possession before Sexton went off. We were in control of the game before Sexton got injured. We were in control of the game um, in many ways. And so, if Sexton plays the full game or 70 minutes of it, whatever, uh, and we have that level of control for those 70 minutes then it's going to be much tighter. And, you know, if we don't give them 28 points, well, then the scoreboard is going to be much closer as well. Yeah, of course. There's a lot of ifs and buts there. And I chatted to um, Josh van der Fleer. I interviewed him a while ago. And I kind of put that to him that, um, you know, when you play New Zealand, what's the difference between playing them here or playing them at home? And it's hard to pinpoint... Um, there's a ruthlessness that's always there with them and I think and I've kind of referenced this already chatting to you last week that you know if you go back to the games that Ireland beat them they seem to be very ambitious very accurate for long long periods of the game of course you're always going to make some mistakes but that 10 minute period and, and of all the teams in world rugby they're probably the team that punish you the most if you make mistakes and if they get their tails up and they're in a bit of a rebuilding uh, process themselves. That's seven changes from the team that's, that played last November. A lot of familiar faces, but they're very, very ruthless in what they do. And um, I think if you make wholesale changes, then you risk... It's risk-reward. If it works, it's loads of energy, loads of enthusiasm, new guys in, um, and, you know, they bring that energy. I think the continuity piece is particularly when you're looking at reviewing the game and you look at little moments and things that you could have done differently. And we, I highlighted them on Monday, you know, the quick penalty from Gibson Park, maybe breaking out from the mall, a couple of kicks that probably should have went into touch. And they lost control at that period. And of, as I said, of all the teams, um, historically, they will punish you severely if you make mistakes. So um, it's a kind of a catch-22 because you do want to develop a bit of depth and you do want to go to the World Cup in France next year, ideally, and 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 be able to win the big matches and have brought through more guys that that can step up to the place. But um, 
yeah, it's uh, it's it makes for a really interesting one. They've kind of gone with the same selection as well, and and the challenge here and the question here, Jar, is will they get better as well? I think Ireland will be better, and I still think they will learn from some of their mistakes, but the chances are New Zealand are going to be better as well. More than likely they will. Like, and traditionally, with we, we Gregor Paul on, he said that the third test in these um, opening test series for New Zealand is when they put in their, their best performances and he referenced the 16 nil. I, I do think the 16 nil is like a bit of a red herring given that we had a sending off so early in the game and, and that completely skewed it and heads went straight away when that happened. But, uh, you know, if, if they continue to improve, like you would still make them very strong favourites for this game at the weekend, but we do expect a much crisper controlled performance from Ireland? Yeah, and I think they they believe... Um, look, they, they have to try and believe, but I genuinely think they believe that if they can kind of sustain what they did in the first 20 minutes for a long, longer period, there's no way you're going to be able to do that for 80 minutes, but um, you've just got to be sharp and really limit the mistakes and, and hope that um, you get a little bit of flow and momentum, and um, I think they'll try and do the same, whether... You know, they can break down New Zealand um, again at the weekend. And particularly, I suppose, what happened in the second half. But it's going to be very, very difficult. You know, they've um, Sam Whitelock is out for them. He'll be a, certainly be a loss. Or Scott Barrett, you know, goes into the second row. And Papali comes into the back row. It doesn't really weaken them. They've made a couple of changes on the bench as well. But um, it's a very, very difficult task. It, it always was before this tour. Um, but I think really um, you would hope that Ireland will be able to control the tempo a little bit better and the key part of of, of their attack in, in recent years when they've been successful is their set piece has been pretty solid so they can't afford to have a creak and scrum this week um, they can't afford to lose four line outs um, if they want to win this game I think they're the small things and small details that are going to be really important and Dare I say they've got to be really physical because um, you know the collisions at the breakdown probably in a, a few crucial moments they lost them after again in that first 20 minutes they had some brilliant turnovers Ty Bourne had one Peter Romani had one um, they isolated New Zealand a little bit so um, they've got to get to a lot right this week but I think they believe they can and Andy Farrell was asked about the pressure and um, he's kind of the type of character that you would always think and he played like that as a rugby league player um, that loved the challenge and I love the fact that the press conference that he was saying look we want to, to we want this pressure because we want to test the characters of our players we want to see how far they can go we want to see had they got the stomach for it uh, and that was they were his exact words and you know that's the challenge really they've got to step up this week and um, aside from you know, getting their game right, they have to really kind of have a, a bit of mental fortitude um, and a bit of aggression and, and anger with them this week and really hope that, you know, they can front up and they get some of the 50-50 calls maybe that went against them last week. Not to decide, they weren't the deciding factor, I think. There was some, you know, the, the Reese, several Reese try just kind of turned the whole momentum. They have to create some momentum shifters this week themselves. And, I think if they can get into the 50th, 60th minute, um, either ahead or you know close to New Zealand, I think they're, they'll be in a really, really strong position. Sounds very obvious, doesn't it? But I think if they can stay in the game past half time this week, I think they'll really believe and maybe they'll create a little bit of doubt. But you know, on one hand, then you think, well, New Zealand will get better and they'll be tails up and uh, yeah, they can be devastating. Let me let me ask you right, so um, Andy Farrell says he wants the team to be under this pressure and to see if they respond and, and it's a test of character for them. What if they fail that test of character? What if it's another 46-12? Yeah. yeah, if they fail that, well <laughs> you know, we'll have to analyse the game and see where it went wrong and decide if the players actually have the stomach for it. Are some players um you know, should should they be on the team? Should we make changes? Like, it's a very, it's the wrong time to really kind of um, start picking the, breaking the team completely apart. We have to realise, Jaron, look, you know that you notice yourself that the New Zealanders are capable of, of, you know, we don't know how good this all-black team is at the moment. We know there's a lot of excellent players on the team. 
they've probably had an up and down kind of period since the World Cup. South Africa have had a fair bit of dominance against them. We've beaten them. Um, Australia, I think possibly Argentina, maybe during COVID got a victory in Australia. Um, so they've shown some vulnerability and the pressure that was on them last week was immense. The pressure that's on Ian Foster, the coach. So um, if Ireland fail here and, and, and you know get a big beat, and if you like, well... Is it back to the drawing board? What do you do? You you know, there's it's not as if we have well, ten not, players at home. I was going to say, I was going to um, say, there's not much that and for, for me that's the risk. There's not a lot we can do. Yeah. Well, so that, and that's the risk in picking your best team. You pick your best team last week. Okay, fair enough. You want to get out the whole thing off to a, a really good start. They get hammered. You pick your best team again the second week. If they get hammered again, it is definitely, oh, okay. Uh, what do we do now? Because there yeah, isn't. But, you know, the team who played the Marys. Yeah, it depends what you what like. They were beaten by, was it 22 or three points last week, uh, 42-19. It should have been closer. I think the score flattered a little bit. Um, now, look. The score always flatters, the flatters a little team. bit, though. Like the World Cup quarterfinal yeah. in Japan, you know, it all maybe if we hadn't... It wasn't, yeah, well, no, but it wasn't. It was that, look, I think we're clinging on to the period of, of before half time, And I think Ireland, it wasn't as if they were unbelievably dominant the whole game. I think when you look at it, of course there was mistakes and and I thought the, the New Zealand tries were, were, they didn't have to work very hard from. Of course, if you, if you kind of have a really, really disappointed performance, you're well beat, well, it's, it's, it's going to be a hard one to take and it'll be very hard to pick themselves up for a third test and I think you will have, he'll have no choice but kind of make, make some changes then and, um, See where where the, what the players can do. Gavin Coombs maybe come in. Um, you know, it's a pity. It's 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 you know, it's a pity that Ronan Keller isn't here. I think he's such a good player. It would have been brilliant to see him here and have uh, Dan Sheehan coming off the bench. Henderson's a loss. We don't have the same pool or depth of players that they have. And honestly, I drove from Queenstown today to to uh, to Dunedin, and I must have passed uh, fifty. Uh, rugby pitches and schools in a in a three hour journey and kids out playing rugby. It's just it's an it's 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 hard to put it into context how passionate and how important rugby is here. And given the the amount of players they have here, um, you know, if we had any anywhere near the same depth, uh, it would be incredible. But look, it's that's why it makes it such a difficult task, and that's why you've been in, they've been near top of the pile forever um the all black so um why why couldn't yeah, is question... so different like to play there compared to like in Ireland like if 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 Ireland's soccer team played New Zealand in New Zealand you'd just be you wouldn't think it made much of a difference at all like the climate isn't much different what is it like why why is it so difficult to win there i just think that there uh, johnny it's it's a good question and you know i we there's always this intrigue in sport about you know home and away and you know, when I played for Munster, when one of the big goals we had at the start was win in France for the first time, be the first Irish team to win in France. We did it. And then you start to say, well, why can't we do this more regularly? And then mm. other teams started doing it. But, you know, it's 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 a different environment. It's a different dressing room. The travel, uh, the crowd, the referees get swayed. And you start adding all those little points together. And, you know, they create... Um, a different environment for you um, and I think there's so much pressure on New Zealand every time they put on the jersey but particularly at home they get absolutely slated here if they lose a test match um, if they lost last week in Ireland beat them they'd be calling for the head coach the captain uh, wholesale changes in the team so it's like a religion here really it's like our GA really at home it's just everywhere you go you see people with rugby balls and you drive through the small towns and it's just so passionate. So I think they feel more responsibility at home here. Like they seldom lose away from home either, but mm -hmm. um, they very, very rarely lose at home. And it's just like a religion here to them. You said about the officiating, is that like, I think Ty Byrne was quoted after the game and saying he can't, he can't figure out some of the decisions like from the first test. Is that an issue at all for Ireland or? A little bit. Um, I think there was issues at the breakdown that weren't picked up. Um, there was a Scott Barrett clear out on on Peter O'Mahony, which is baffling that it, he he was he was a sighted. That doesn't make any um, sense, does it? it? It makes no sense. And World Rugby should really come out and answer um, 
what the situation is here. It's it's a clear clip of Scott Barrett hitting Peter Manny with his shoulder in the back of the head, neck area. And the referee said it was it was in the chest. And you could hear Peter Romani um, arguing the point afterwards. He's not cited for it. It's not highlighted anywhere. There's no real replays here um, because um, New Zealand, uh, the coverage, the, the control by the director at the match and all those pictures are controlled by uh, Sky Sports in New Zealand. And I'm not criticising them, but I'm just saying it's kind of swept under the carpet and it's just let's move on and there's no issue here. Um, if that was in the Northern Hemisphere, Jar, it's a red card and it's a suspension. And how it's not even mentioned or, or clarified um, afterwards or during the week, um, like it was a clear shoulder into the, the back yeah. of Peter Romani's head and neck. Yeah. And like, like, look, thankfully he wasn't injured. It wasn't that forceful. Um, but if that was in the Northern Hemisphere, it's a red card. So look, it's. I'm talking about some of the refereeing decisions. They weren't the deciding factor here because um, I think New Zealand were just ruthless at a few really, really crucial moments and they can do that to anyone. But I just thought... Um, and the penalty count, Ireland, New Zealand were 14 penalties, Ireland were 10, so, but a lot of those penalties were late on. Yeah, um, and the yellow card was pointless because it was at the end, whereas actually if there'd been an early yellow card for either team then we might have had a sense of, okay, the rules are being... It's funny because it, it was obviously a Northern Hemisphere referee. Like, I don't know, is there an overcorrection? Yeah, when, when yeah. You down, and I like... just, look, I just think there was no... Um, from the the two assistant referees, very little intervention, bar calling a few few um, offsides. The TMO was silent the whole game. Um, I just can't understand why he doesn't go back and say to Carl Dixon, look, we got to check this, it's shoulder to head. Yeah. Let's at least review it. Um, Stick it on the big screen so the, the everybody rook. can see it, you know? So Some of the entries into the rooks, um, the side clearouts, um, I think uh, Andrew Porter's about to score a try. Sam Whitelock just drives straight in, in from the side on the, on the goal line. Again, it, Ireland wouldn't have won the game, I don't think, but it would have been a lot closer. And Well, it, it's um, not even about that. It, it, it then prevents that from happening this week. That's the main thing, is that, like as we saw, Raz's video yeah. stopped so everything sure. from happening in week two, and that's the whole point of, of trying to understand exactly what's supposed to happen. Yeah, and look, we saw from Raz Erasmus last year at the Lions, every coach could probably, and I'm sure Ian Foster could go out and pick some clips and say that the Irish team were, were infringing. Yeah. Um, but... If Andy Farrell is picking his clips this week, uh, you know, some of them are very, very obvious that he would want. He said he wanted clarity on some of the cleanouts, um, some issues. So Jakob Piper's reference this week, you know, will they be watching for the, the kind of side entries in rocks, the clear outs beyond the rock <laughs> players were tight. So you know what that makes yeah. it more difficult because players are off their feet and then the kind of a little gap can open up. Scott Barrett was holding Josh van der Fleer for Aaron Smith's break through the middle of the rock. Things I would do myself, absolutely, no problem at, at saying that. But you need a little bit of help sometimes, and sometimes in these situations, um, you don't get them when you're away from home. But we've got to take our hat off and say, look, New Zealand were brilliant at that period of time, and the tries they scored, and, and the effectiveness and ruthlessness um, was there, and, and they punished Ireland. And if Ireland makes the same sort of mistakes again this week, very, very quickly, the game is it can be gone away from you. F physically, where are they at, the Irish team, at this stage of the season? And psychologically, they go into this, obviously, knowing that, as Jarrah says, like a bad defeat here is a massive psychological blow. But like physically, they collapse in the second half to an extent to last year. Do they, do they have it in them at this it's stage actually of the season? actually the end of the first half they collapsed. Mm. So well, after the second. second half. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I thought they finished the game really strong. So, I like John Duggan asked me this last um, Saturday after the game when I chatted to him about... You know, it's a long season, are they tired? Um, is that play a factor on that? I don't think so because it's been a different season. There's been lots of stop start situations with COVID. A lot of the players have been pretty fresh. Um, I know mentally you're still going in July playing rugby, but there's been lots of breaks through the season. So I wouldn't kind of go down that road of we're very fatigued. And, um, you know, so I think they're in decent shape. I thought physically they were well able to match New Zealand. Uh, it was just that little bit of X factor at times, and and that clinical kind of attack that really punished Ireland and and punished those mistakes. I didn't really see. Oh, look, I think collectively there's an aggression there and a real kind of 
a hardness amongst these New Zealand players, and that's kind of a standard when you put on that jersey. They're not massive physical specimens that you're 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 they're overweighing the opposition. But I tell you, they're so aggressive and collectively they're very, very aggressive in what they do. So I would like to see Ireland be a bit more aggressive, a little bit more narky on Saturday and uh, really kind of have more of a physical kind of fight and confrontational approach within the boundaries, yeah. not giving away stupid penalties and yeah. stuff, but just be a little bit um, a little bit clinic, uh, cynical themselves. One, one last thing on this, right? It's, it's less the physical toll of the season. Some of our players are just not in their peak form at the moment. You wouldn't say Tyke Furlong is in his peak form, you wouldn't say James Ryan's peak form, and you wouldn't say Caelan Doris are in their peak form. Yeah, and there's no... Um, there's no uh, reason to suggest that they won't find their form at the start of the season. Some player, everybody's different mentally, physically. Um, I would think they're in decent shape physically, but just maybe um, the end of the season, James Ryan has been out for a fair bit. Um, he's trying to fight, fight to find his form again. Caelan Doris had, had an absolutely brilliant year, I suppose, the last... Uh, the end of the season was disappointing for him. Who knows what he's feeling? Um, he could have a stormer this week. You know, James Ryan, I think, is working incredibly hard. Tyke Furlong is probably. You see, the challenge here is when you're kind of you're turning that world class like Tyke Furlong has been for a long, long time, and then scrum creaks a little bit, and you don't you're not as prominent as maybe you have been, or not making those 10, 15 yard bursts that he normally does. Um, I think, sorry, I lost you for a oh, sector. Yeah. Um, um, I, I think then that's, uh, you're more scrutinised more. But again, um, who knows what way, but what they're feeling. But I think that they're still top quality players will, that will go to the World Cup and, and hopefully they'll perform on Saturday because um, if oh. Ireland have any chance, they need, they need a real collective effort here and a cohesive effort from everybody. All right. Alan, good stuff. Give us your prediction. Oh, I'm not sure we win, but I think we'll be quite close. I really believe that. Um, look, I, don't, I, I, I just can't see us winning. I, I'll find it hard to believe if you know what I mean. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I still think we're going to have a, a real good rattle off them and uh, and make it very very close. I'll tell you if we're if can't we're see us winning, on, but it'll be very close. Yeah, <laughs> if if. Well, what do you want me to say, Johnny? It's hard to ever, <laughs> ever back against the All Blacks. We're in New Zealand here, so me yeah. saying Ireland are going to win on Saturday is kind of, you know, that's that's leading with my heart. I just think, I think we'll see a much better performance. And if Ireland are in the game in 50 minutes, 60 minutes, I think we'll win the game then. I think if we can get to that point, I think we will win it then. So you but, can see us winning? Uh, yeah, I can see us. There's lots of ifs and buts. But, a million so, ifs and buts, really. You know, Put put me on put me on the spot, and uh, you know New Zealand will win the game. If I asked either one of you who will win the game, what are you going to say? New Zealand, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Are you going to? I think I think uh, what little I know, I think it'll be closer though. Yeah. I mean, I hope you're all right. I hope you're all right because if it's not closer, it's a bit of a disaster. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, look, the the evidence suggests that we we could have kept it much closer. Certainly, the the stats back up. The people who are optimistic, mm. I, I'm just still, you know. If, if we if we wants. if we get a little bit of luck, if we get a little bit of luck on Saturday, we need a little bit of luck. Yeah. We may have, a, we you know, I think we have a good chance then. 